All right, gather round. Another demo coming up here. This time we are exploring Insight 2. Now, Insight is kind of your mission control for all things metering. And we've had Insight 1 out for a little while now. Insight 2 is clearly the successor and is, it is, a, is quite a successor in every way. We have here a number of modules that we can turn on and off. And as I turn them on and off, the main window populates with those modules. So we have one for loudness, you can turn everything off except for maybe spectrum. And there's spectrum right there. I can resize this window as well, which is really handy. So if you're someone who's got 8,000 monitors and all you want to do is get your, your levels and maybe your, your spectrogram, you can have those two things open and squash them down very small and have them over here. Um, loudness also looks really good if I just turn that on and squish it and bring it over here. I'll get some audio going so you can hear the session a little bit. So that's as small as Insight 2 will go. Of course, I could bring in other modules right here, and now we have these three. We can also resize them from the main window as well. Let me actually bring this out a little bit. There we go. So it's fully customizable to whatever it happens to be that you're working on, whether it's uh, you know a podcast or an audiobook, or you can even go up to 7.1.2, which is the Dolby Atmos standard. We accommodate that as well. Um, so let's just stretch it out here. And what I'm gonna show you is some of the ways that you can use it in a musical context. So we have loudness over here. By the way, if you want, you can click on these little arrow icons and they'll pop out and reveal themselves kind of in full screen mode. And this is a really great way to just see what's happening at a glance and then pop it back down. Same thing with levels. This is stereo tracks, so we're only getting left and right. And then pop that back down. Same thing here with the sound field. And if I had a 7.1.2 file, we would see the sound field kind of accommodate that and shift and change form to accommodate a surround uh, setup. We can change how we visualize polarity and panorama as well. And the loudness history is great. Open that up here. I have a loop going, so we're going to see the same information repeating. But this is really helpful if you're trying to see over time anything that might be poking out. Uh, if you're doing some dialogue and a character gets a little bit too excited, you can pause it and then go over and see here and scroll and see the momentary short-term and integrated loudness of the program material and go and see, okay, well, we had a problem here at the 29 second mark. Go back, control for that with a compressor, whatever it happens to be. Maybe just manually go in there, snip something down at a clip level, bring down the audio. So we also have a number of layouts. I think a little bit like presets, but they're over here in the top menu there. I just pop them open. And we have one for audio analysis. So we have you know, for any kind of forensic work you're doing, you just want to get your basic meters. We have loudness metering as well. Just click them. And this is great. We have all these specs if you're broadcasting for, you know, for Japan, for Canada, for the US. It's all here for surround as well. And let's say you're working on music production. Let's say you're doing a podcast. Well, we have a layout for that as well down here at the bottom, podcast production. Just gives you everything you need. You can also customize this and add the modules in that you want and then go here and just save that as a preset, hit the plus sign, and I'll just say this is Jeff's, you know, podcast preset. And that's saved forever amid the other, the other layouts. So, customizable, move things around. Where it gets really interesting is where we've updated some of the inter-plugin communication workflows. So at Isotope, we're kind of trailblazing in three ways. The first is assistive audio technology. We have stuff that can actually get you a custom built preset. So we have this thing called Nectar, and it listens to the vocal track and comes up with custom settings for the compressor EQ, et cetera. We also have Repair Assistant that listens to the audio, hears certain things, clicks, pops, clipping, hum, noise, and corrects them for you. So the assistive stuff is something we're pushing a lot. And we also have machine learning algorithms. So algorithms that are built on the back of training neural networks to identify certain sonic events, and then see them in your session and take care of them. So in RX, for example, we have a thing called Dialog Isolate. Informed by machine learning, we have another thing called Music Rebalance, where you can isolate and turn down bass, guitar, drums. This guy knows what I'm talking about. 
The other thing we're doing is this thing called inter-plugin communication. So what this is, is a protocol that allows our plugins to talk to each other and share information, or at least be aware of one another. So how does this come into play with Insight 2? So one of the great things about Insight is we have this, um, I'm going to show the intelligibility meter in a moment, but I want to go to the spectrogram here. I'm going to close this out just so we see the spectrogram. I'm going to play some audio. We see the spectrogram rolling across the screen. This is in 3D. Of course, I can change it to 2D. We see this. This is a little bit more boring, but this might be your bag. Time, left to right, frequency top to bottom. Loudness is indicated by brightness. So amplitude is, you know, that which is brighter will be louder. So how interplugging communication factors into all this stuff is if I have other Isotope plugins in my session, specifically those that come with Music Production Suite 2, a little bit more information about that in that pamphlet there, Insight 2 knows about those plugins, where they are in my session, and I can actually shuttle through frequency content and frequency information into Insight 2 almost in a topographical map sort of way. So I'm going to stop talking and just show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to go to the gear wheel. We're going to go back to 3D. Now I have a pretty modest session in here. You know, I've got some vocals, bass. This gets along with everything. By We're just using Logic because we have Logic, but whatever digital, digital audio workstation you're working with, we play with. We have a Celeste, Mellotron, Voyager, drums, guitar. And on each one of those tracks, you see this little guy here called Relay. If I open it up, it's simple enough at first sight. This is just a channel ops plugin. So this is just, you know, we have some gain here, we have some left and right panning. If I open up the advanced panel, we have mono, phase polar uh, polarity invert, channel swap, high pass filter. But the really cool thing about Relay is that Insight 2 is aware that I have a Relay on my Celeste. It's aware that I have a Relay on my Mellotron, on the Voyager and everything else. So I'll show you what I mean by this. I'll go down to the spectrogram, when I click it, what do you see? Relay, 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 relay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So that's because, so these are showing up here in the menu because it knows relays are on my other tracks. And what I can do is click to have these guys show up in the spectrogram. We can have eight, up to eight sources. And now when I play the audio, you know, so let's just say Voyager is going to be pink. The vocals are going to be kind of a light red, bass is a deep red. I'll press OK. And now when I play it, I can also change the orientation as well. So this gives me kind of topographical information about how these frequencies are getting along together. We see the visual representation of those frequencies and we can go, you know what, I think I'm seeing too much green. Go back and see which one green is. Um, right here, that, those are my drums, so maybe I'll just go turn them down a little bit. It'll take a little while to kind of recalibrate. Maybe I have a bit too much red, too much bright red. Actually, maybe I want to change this. Maybe this, this red is making me think that it's the bass, but it's really the vocal. So I just double click, I'll change the color. I'll change it to uh, maybe a deep blue. There we go. So this is how our vision for interplugin communication manifests itself in the plugins. It's real-time information right away, what's happening in the tracks, and it's just such a, a healthier, a, a more healthy way to kind of make decisions about your audio. We don't have the hearing of bats. We can't hear the very specific things. So we need kind of all the help we can get visually to gut check the decisions we're making at a mix or mastering level. I want to show you another application of Insight, but this time in a post-production context. The other way that interplugging communication manifests itself in Insight 2 is this thing called the intelligibility meter. So for post folks, Getting the dialogue to be intelligible against all the other mix elements is a constant challenge. Uh, you've got Foley, you've got ambience, you've got sound effects, you've got all kinds of stuff competing for the attention of your audience. And the dialogue is king. The dialogue should always win, or at least it always does, in the post world. And we've built some tools that call upon this interplug and communication technology to help you make decisions about whether or not your dialogue is intelligible, whether it might be crowded by something, so here we are again with Insight 2. We're just in a different workstation, Pro Tools now. And I'm going to go over to my intelligibility icon here. And we see a familiar set of options here. We, we did the same thing with the spectrogram. It's asking us what we want to feed in to make the intelligibility meter start moving. So 
because I have on my dialogue track here, I'm gonna close this for a moment. Here's my original dialogue. If I solo it, you can hear it here. We've been partners, we've been friends for a very long time, haven't we? You're my family. If I unsolo it, we can hear the environmental effects in music. We've been partners, we've been friends for a very long time, haven't we? So I have Insight 2 parked on my master. Go back to Insight, and I'm gonna say, I want the intelligibility meter to recognize that this relay is where the dialogue is coming from. And what it's gonna do is, this little ball is gonna start moving, and this is the range of intelligibility for a low noise environment. We have medium noise, and you see how that moves up as I go from low to medium? We also have high. So maybe you're mixing for an airplane or something like that where the noise floor is just crazy. So you can mix for different kind of environments and use the intelligibility meter as a guide. So I'm gonna say we're gonna keep it here on medium. I'm gonna hit play. That ball is the dialogue. So I'm noticing that ball isn't really going within the bounds of the medium noise listener environment. So that tells me that maybe I got to turn it up a little bit. And because relay's right there on the track, I can just turn it up right from here. It'll crank it up a little bit. An EQ move could also render it more intelligible as well. It's up to you how you want to negotiate that obstacle. We've been partners, we've been friends for a very long time, haven't we? So now we're kind of in the ballpark. You're my family. So that's just a brief kind of snapshot of the kinds of workflows that we have available and the kinds of problems that we're solving with interplug and communication uh, within Insight 2. But I'd say if you're working on music, we've got all kinds of great kind of layouts and presets for the music minded and for post as well. Um, just different ways to tackle problems that have been plaguing, you know, post guys for years, this intelligibility thing.